How's it going, everyone? Tommy from Weather Storm Drop. That was today. It's August 24th, 2021, and today we're going to forecast the 2021 and 2022 winter season and see what type of winter you should expect in each region of the United States. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more better records. Make sure to like if you like this video, and make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more better records. So, the first determine what type of winter you'll experience in what region we first need to take a look at the certain patterns we typically see during um during a uh, winter which is pretty much determined by whether or not we see an el nino a la nina year or a neutral year so let's first take a look at the years and intensities of strong moderate to weak el ninos or la ninas and compare and compare those years to what has happened in the past with years similar to what we're expecting to experience right now so as you can see um the la nina we have multiple years where um there are weak la ninas 1955 all the way to 2018 moderate la ninas we had five and then strong la ninas we had around seven but this this year we're expected to i think have right around a moderate to weak la nina and if we were to include um but overall the current forecast is that we're going to experience a la nina this year for a lot of the united states as that's the current forecast so take a look at how those la nina years turn out when it comes to temperature anomalies and precipitation anomalies um if we were to take a look at that you see that during years we have a la nina between the months of november and february um this data um versus the long-term average between 1991 and 2020 of years where we experience a la nina and you see there is a pretty good there's a pretty big consensus that the southern areas during a La Nina year would be much warmer than average or at least uh, much drier than average excuse me and um we and typically the northwest Pacific receives more precipitation than average during a uh, La Nina year which isn't which isn't something that's atypical for that region since the Pacific jet moves through that region brings a lot of moisture to the Northwest Pacific. And we also do see a slightly more moisture than average, I'd say right around the Ohio Valley and throughout the Appalachian Mountain Range. However, it isn't so, the anomaly isn't so huge at a point where it's a major data point that um, we should, that we should um, take into account since it's barely um above average when it comes to precipitation anomaly in that region but you see that throughout a la nina year it's drier than average in the south and a more moist than average in the northwest pacific as well as right around the ohio valley which is usual for la ninas typically so we just certainly need to take that into account when making this forecast if we were to base the winter prediction um our winter prediction for this year based off of this we should expect a drier than average winter throughout the southern united states and a more moist than average winter throughout the ohio valley and the northwest pacific however there are still a lot more that we need to cover before we can jump to that conclusion so that now let's take a look at the temperature anomaly during years where we experience a la nina between the months of november and february um of the years 1955 through 56 56 through 57 and all and pretty much um going forward um compared to the long-term average between um that takes data from that compares data from 1991 all the way up to 2020 so we have 30 years to reference for um for the temperature anomaly data and you see that um there's a pretty big consensus at the northern united states experiences well below average temperatures for um during la nina years and it pretty much goes for the entire united states pretty much the only areas where you experience i'd say right around average temperature average temperatures is towards the southeast how but besides that you see that most of the united states experiences cooler than average temperatures during years where we experience a la nina which is something definitely we want to um take account for even ac across the west coast which um where they which typically experiences drier than normal conditions throughout during la nina years is experiencing cooler than average conditions so it's something we certainly need to, to, to take into account when making this forecast now in terms of the actual forecast of what type of pattern we will see for this winter you see that 
the most likely scenario at this point head into the months of november december january we will more likely than not see a la nina um as of right now which um certainly plays a big part in determining what type of winter you'll experience in um which region however you see that during during the late winter the the pattern sort of goes through might go through a change where we could enter a neutral phase during the late winter months such as maybe as early as january or um, more likely in february and march so that's certainly something we need to consider however i will say that la nina isn't that doesn't bring conditions that much different than what you'd experience with the neutral phase um, if we were to take a look at what la nina typically brings and it's very similar to what the climate um data plot was saying that i just showed you where the temperatures throughout the northern united states were cooler than average and the southern united states was drier than average as you could see during a la nina phase we typically see warmer and drier than average conditions throughout the southeast drier than average conditions throughout the southwest more moist than average conditions in the pacific northwest which completely agrees with the map with the data plot i just showed you um with um that shows um the years of la nina the anomalies during years within uh, la nina and you see that northern united states experiences cooler than average temperatures and you see the ohio valley experiences more moist than average conditions which again uh, completely agrees with the data point so it's something certainly we need to keep a close of eye on and really take into consideration of what type of winter we'll see because it's most likely we will see a La Nina for this winter which would mean that we'll experience cold and average conditions throughout the northern United States and conditions like these overall but there's still more we need to uncover before we could jump to that conclusion and it's going to be a little bit more um, difficult to really show you guys um, um, um the exact forecast for this winter because it seems like the climatology model is completely disagreeing with the la nina almost completely disagreeing because you see that during the three month average between december january and february 2022 you see that majority of the united states is much warmer than average um which sort of um however it is around average in the northwest pacific and the northern um united states um so but when you compound that to the fact that we're going to experience a la nina i'd ex still expect it to be cooler than average throughout the northwest um united states and throughout the northern midwest as well but you see mostly united states based off of what the cfs model is saying is forecasting a much warmer um, winter than average throughout the united states peaking right around the midwest to the southeast which kind of does coincide with what a la nina would typically bring warmer than average conditions throughout the southern united states um and this even extends to the west coast as well now take a look at the precipitation anomaly um um for um for a three month average you see that we do see more moist than average conditions i'd say th um throughout the ohara valley as well as the northern midwest however um and much drier than average conditions throughout florida however for most of the united states it seems like the cfs model is forecasting mainly average precipitation maybe drier than average just off the east coast but for the most part con um precipitation should be average for most of the united states besides maybe um the west coast where they're still experiencing a drought and i don't think the cfs model is really synthesizing that data as well as it could that there's a big drought going on along the west coast because if it did it should forecast it should be able to forecast it sh that it will be much drier than average because droughts like i said do not go away very easily so i do expect that drought to continue throughout the west coast um however it's still expecting drier than average conditions throughout um california and um you see that for but for most of the united states it should be primarily average but since the cfs model is forecasting more moist than average conditions um right around the ohio river valley as well as a la nina that's expected to occur which typically brings more moisture than average throughout the midwest and the great lakes then we should expect much more moist conditions throughout the midwest for this winter and i'd say drier than average conditions overall for the southern united states because a la nina um effect um will make a big effect in terms of what type of precipitation anomalies you should experience throughout the united states now um taking um now taking a look at our next um thing we need to take a look 
Um, our next data point is the drought monitor, which I think is another big factor we need to consider when making this forecast because you see that the entire western United States is completely is deep under a drought at this point. And um, while yes, yeah, so there's still several months before we really head into winter, um, it's I just want to point out that this drought been lasting for months on end, pretty much all throughout 2021. And um, like I said, and like I said in my previous forecast videos, it's very difficult for a drought to go away because pretty much when there's a drought, there isn't a lot of moisture um, in along the surface, and that typically heats up the temperatures throughout the region and um, less evaporation occurs overall. So it kind of creates sort of like an endless cycle where a drought would continue for months if it were to occur since there's not since it's been dry there isn't a lot of moisture on the ground when there isn't a lot of moisture in the ground that means that temperatures will warm up as um and um less evaporation and convection will occur for any sort of precipitations um to occur to potentially end this drought so um this could very well last into the winter time which is certainly um a pretty big concern because you definitely do not want to see a drought anywhere in the united states but it should be but unfortunately i think this should last for months on end because it's just very hard for a drought to go away but the but i do still believe that the northwest pacific might get out of it because simply during la nina we see a prevailing pacific jet move through the region which brings a lot of troughs throughout the region and precipitation so we could potentially see it end in the northwest pacific however for the southwest i find it unlikely that it'll end anytime soon because a la nina typically doesn't bring a lot of moisture to the southwest so um as a result i do expect the, the drought to continue in the southwest which means warmer and drier conditions overall for this winter now taking a look at our next um data point we need to take um um to forecast this winter you see we need to take a look at the arctic oscillation and you see that now we're in the negative arctic oscillation and right now what happens with the Arctic oscillation is huge because if we're in a positive Arctic oscillation, that means that more of the cold air that's centered towards Canada and the North Pole at this point will remain in the same area. And as and as a result, we should um, Canada and the North Pole overall should experience cooler than average um, conditions when the Arctic oscillation is positive thanks to the jet stream not dipping down, diverting that cold air further southward and keeping it to the north. Um, as a result, it should, um, more snow should be expected in the north during a positive Arctic oscillation. And as a result, like once a negative Arctic oscillation comes in, that means more cold air should be behind a negative Arctic oscillation in the United States. However, the good news is, is that we're in the negative Arctic oscillation, which means that uh, Canada and the North Pole won't be as cold to increase the snowpacks and as a result, um, increase the amount of cold air um, throughout the Northern, um, throughout North America overall. So when a negative Arctic oscillation potentially comes in the winter, it won't be as cold as let's say if the, the snow packs were higher during the fall months in Canada and Greenland. So, um, the good news is the Arctic oscillation is at a negative, and chances are that this negative phase could last for maybe a month or two. So, by the time winter begins, um, right around I'd say November to December, we could stay in a positive Arctic oscillation for quite some time, which would limit the amount of cold air and as a result snowstorms throughout the United States. Now, to show you what exactly an Arctic oscillation is, pretty much like I said, during a positive Arctic oscillation, the jet stream doesn't um, dip. Um, the westerly winds are stronger, so it diverts that cold air from moving north to south to more of a um, west to easterly direction, which keeps the cold air throughout Canada and increases snowpacks um throughout canada however during a negative arctic oscillation we see jet stream dip colder air throughout the united states and it's going to be less cold in canada because that cold air diverts further southward um towards the united states which means less snowfall overall for canada to enhance the cold air um when in, to enhance the cold air overall when a negative arctic oscillation comes so as a result like thanks to a potential positive arctic oscillation happening 
um, in the early winter. We should expect maybe a, a warmer than average winter and less snowstorms than usual for this winter for a lot of the United States. Now for my overall forecast for this winter, which has been updated from a month ago before I was forecasting um, a quarter and snowier winter than usual for a lot of the Midwest and even the Northeast. However, I have changed my forecast based off of the recent, um, based off of what the CFS model has recently been saying with um, that's forecasting a warmer winter than average for a lot of United States. I'm expecting it to be warmer than average throughout the Midwest, more moist than average as well. And even towards the mid-Atlantic states, I do expect it to be warmer than average and much warmer than average throughout the southern United States and more dry than average um, also. I expect it to be still cold and snowy and cool and moist throughout the Northwest Pacific and the Northern Midwest because we're still going to be in a La Nina phase and the CFS model isn't very lenient on bringing that warm air this far north so I do expect it to be cooler than average throughout the um, northern midwest as well as uh, Pacific Northwest and I expect it to be colder than average throughout the north at least uh, interior portions of the northeast and maybe New England because during the La Nina we typically see more jet stream dips um, so I do expect it to be cooler than average throughout the new england and the interior north um northeast overall so this is my winter forecast for 2021 2022 i might make an update as things well i will make an update as things change maybe around a rate of um a month um on well, once a month or maybe once every few weeks depending on how much changes occur with the forecast um remember take it with a grain of salt because it's very difficult to forecast um it's very difficult to forecast what type of um patterns you'll see within um overall a couple months i mean it's already difficult to forecast um weather only seven days out imagine a couple months out so um however i will say that the conditions you see here they're more likely than not going to happen it's still very possible it might not happen at all but I'd say more likely than not, you should at least predict these sort of conditions throughout your area. If you want even more in-depth forecast for your area, just make sure to comment your city or your area down below and in the comments. And I'll, and I'll make sure to predict how much snow you should experience in your area. So make sure um, to um, comment on that. But yeah, guys, I guess that's it video. I guess that's it for this video. I thank you guys for watching. Make sure to subscribe. If you want to see more weather calls, make sure to like if you like this video. Make sure to turn on post notifications if you want to see even more weather calls. And I hope you guys have a good day.